Welcome to Accessible Art History, the podcast, the best place for art history lovers or anyone that is curious. My name is Annalisa, and I'm going to share an amazing Roman monument with you today. Just a quick reminder before the episodes get started, all sources and images referenced will be posted on the Accessible Art History blog. You can find that link in the episode description, as well as on Instagram at accessible.art.history. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get started. The Foro Romano, or the Roman Forum, is arguably the most important site in ancient Rome. It served as the political, judicial, and religious center of the city, republic, and later, mighty empire. This particular episode will focus on its historical origin and development during the Roman Republic period, with later episodes covering imperial expansions. By understanding the different buildings and processes that took place here, we can truly get a glimpse into the way the Roman world worked. Before I get started, I'd like to thank listener Alexa for kindly sponsoring today's episode. So without further ado, let's get started. Before I dive into the forum itself, I think it's important to discuss the Roman Republic, how it came to be, and how it evolved during the time period. From its legendary founding in 753 BCE until 509 BCE, Rome was ruled by a series of kings. The last king, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus, was hugely unpopular and tyrannical. He was overthrown and a new system was set up. In the system, the wealthiest citizens set up a series of groups called assemblies of Roman citizens. They were classified by their wealth, with the richest holding the most power. This wasn't a coincidence. Only members of the patrician class were eligible to hold office. There was also a council of plebeians made up of the, quote, ordinary men of Rome. This council was established as a result of protest aimed at the unfairness of having only a small group of men hold the majority of the power. This revolt also led to the councils of soldiers and of local tribes. These councils passed laws based on issues in the Senate, and then the senators would decide which policies to implement. The Senate and the Councils would also work together to appoint executive officials called magistrates and where to expand Rome's holdings in Italy. This was almost always done through armed conflict, and by the end of the 1st century BCE, the Roman Republic was the largest power in the Mediterranean. And with all this power, there needed to be a central place to run things. That's where the Forum comes in. As I mentioned in the introduction, the Roman Forum was truly the daily center for life and government work in the Republican era. I'll dive into the individual buildings and their functions later in the episode, but it's important to note that pretty much every aspect of life was covered in the Forum. There were multiple temples for worship, meeting places for senators and assemblies, open spaces for everyone to enjoy. Anyone could walk around the Forum, listen to speeches, and meet with friends. There were likely shops that sold a variety of goods and, in the early days, even apartments for living. The Forum, therefore, gives us an unprecedented look into how one of the greatest civilizations of the past was run. Every great construction project has to start somewhere. Rome is famous for its seven hills because they provide the ancient population an easily defensible area in which to grow their cities. However, what about the valleys? This was valuable real estate located close to many of the important areas already built up. At first, the land between the Palatine and the Capitoline Hill was used as a necropolis but its location was too prime to use just for the dead. On the Palatine, it was alleged that Romulus built his first fortification, which became the first parts of Rome to be settled. On the Capitoline, worship of the cult of Jupiter Optimus Maximus was thriving, so it made sense for the necropolis to be moved and for a city center to be established. This, however, presented some challenges. Firstly, Rome is built near a large river, the Tiber. It floods quite regularly, leaving the valley filled with water. So drainage canals had to be built to help keep the water from overtaking the area. Another change that needed to be made was creating a level surface to build upon. Fascinating, core samples revealed that this feat was accomplished by creating landfills. Talk about reduce, reuse, and recycle. The Forum, like all of Rome, <laughs> wasn't built in a day. Gradually, buildings sprouted up. I'll talk about specific ones after the break, but the categories included meeting places, temples, government buildings, and shops. We don't know much about the specific construction of the early and middle Republican period because little material evidence remains. However, we do have plenty to study from the late Republican era. By this point, Rome had had several successful wars, which led to money for expansion of public property and the invention of commemorative monuments. Next, I'm going to dive into the specifics of the foreign buildings. But before I do that, let's take a quick break. Hi there, my name is Annalisa, and I'm the founder of Accessible Art History. My goal is to bring art history content to anyone that is curious. All my platforms can be accessed for free, but there are ways that you can support the cause. If you enjoy this episode, please consider leaving a rate and review on your favorite platform. I also have a Patreon and a Buy Me A Coffee account set up if you feel inclined to support Accessible Art History monetarily. 
However, I will always work to bring content for free because I believe that education should be accessible for those who want and need it. Thank you for listening. And now let's get back to the episode. All right, now that we're back, let's take a look at some temples. Firstly, it's important to understand that in ancient Rome, there was no separation between church and state. The two were completely intertwined, and you couldn't have one without the other. Therefore, it isn't surprising that some of the earliest and most important buildings in the Roman Forum were sacred spaces. The first of these is the Temple to Jupiter Optimus Maximus. He was the king of the gods, and his temple was certainly fit for the role. The foundation stones are so massive that they just survive to this day. You can see them in the basement of the Capitoline Museum. Another temple was the Temple of Saturn, built around 498 BCE. It also served as a treasury for the Republic. Finally, we have the Temple of Vesta. This building is harder to date because it had been on the site so long, but it survived well into the Imperial period. It was staffed by the Vestal Virgins, the highest ranked women in the ancient Roman world outside of the Empress. There are more temples in the Forum area, but these are three of the most important. In the Forum, the main political buildings were built on the northwest side. These two complexes were known as the Curia and the Comitum. The Curia was the main senate building. The surviving building is known as the Curia Julia because it was built by Julius Caesar. However, we know that there was a Curia in the Forum dating as far back as the 600s. In front of the Curium was the Comitum. This was an open airspace meant for public meetings and assemblies. Unfortunately, not much remains today. However, records indicate just how important the area was because it allowed for so much political interaction. Another key part of the forum was the political interaction with the rostra. This was a large platform where a speaker would stand facing the north side of the comitum towards the Senate House and give a speech to the people gathered in the area. Anyone and everyone could listen. So this was an effective tool used for arousing support, reaching a population at once, and updating the locals on war efforts. In fact, the name rostra comes from the ship decoration that was placed on the platform after a big naval victory. Another important building type was the basilica. Now this name might be familiar to you in reference to later Christian churches, but when the Romans invented it, they were actually multi-purpose spaces. Sometimes they were used for law courts, other times entertainment venues. They were so effective that multiple were built throughout the Forum, Rome, and Empire during later periods. It was Constantine, who was emperor in the 4th century, that repurposed basilicas as churches. And please note that I will discuss later Forum expansion and rebuilding in a later episode this season, so make sure to keep an eye out for that. Today, the Roman Forum is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the city. Many of the once majestic buildings are in ruins, but archaeologists and the Italian government are working hard to preserve their beauty for future generations. If you do visit, I highly recommend a visit to the nearby Capitoline Museum to see some of the amazing artifacts located there. It really completes the vision of the once mighty city. In all, the remains of the Forum remind us to how much work went into running Rome. It took a special place with a variety of buildings to keep things going. Make sure to tune in next week when I cover the Circus Maximus. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Accessible Art History, the podcast. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at accessible.art.history for updates and keep an eye out on the next episode. They drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform. If you prefer to listen on YouTube, you can find episodes on there about two weeks after the episodes are posted. Cheers and see you next week.